Hi, I'm Lee with Coindesk, and I'm here with Eric Weinstein, and we're going to talk about Bitcoin. So I know you've been aware of Bitcoin for a really long time. Uh, what do you think is its most interesting property? Honestly, I think that the most interesting property is that we know that physical reality works. Mm -hmm. That gold, for example, has worked um, for ages as a, a medium of exchange, a store of value, and that works by physical principles. Mm -hmm. The amazing thing about the blockchain and Bitcoin was that it emerged to show us that we could have a locally enforced conservation law that mimicked physical reality and allow us to have a locally determined medium of exchange and store of value uh, without requiring some sort of centralized authority. Now, it's, in my opinion, its flaw is based around um, the ledger that the blockchain leaves. And that is something that is not duplicated in physical reality. So for me, the most exciting thing is that we're beginning to port the rules of physical reality into logical or digital reality. And since we know physical reality works, it's pretty exciting that you can have an as-if physical reality enforced in a completely logical layer. You just described the blockchain as its flaw. Um, do you think that the Bitcoin blockchain itself uh, will exist in the future or that eventually we'll find some other mechanism of transferring around what is basically digital gold Bitcoin? Right. I believe that maybe the next major revolution in crypto will be the removal of any kind of ledgers. Just as, as gold or money should have no stench, uh, so should a digital token have no stench. And it, it's not enough for us to um, say that we can trade these things anonymously. It should be that when you're handed a, a brick of gold, you have no idea who has owned it previously or where it has been. And I would imagine that the same thing will eventually be true for digital tokens. Uh, you say digital tokens there. Do you think that Bitcoin has a property that is unique compared to other assets beyond the blockchain in terms of uh, the community governance, in terms of uh, how people want to use it? Or do you think we haven't even figured out how to use it? Well, I think we haven't figured out how to use it. And that's one of the things that I think is exciting about it, which is we had a major intellectual breakthrough that did not immediately lead to universal adoption and use cases. Mm -hmm. As a result, some people are very well aware of what happened and others are completely unaware of what happened. So imagine that you, uh, let's say, I invented uh, electricity and there were no applications initially. Maybe some people would be in their labs all the time, very, very excited about what's coming next. But a lot of other people would say, oh, I, I can't see how this has any application to my life. Well, those people are waiting for the tsunami that is going to uh, explain to them uh, if not in theoretical terms, very practical terms, just how important this was. In 2017, you had tweeted something about um, dollars and other fiats backed by violence, meaning like the government has a monopoly on violence. Do you think that Bitcoin's big innovation, beyond being able to take a physical property and make it digital, is uh, separation of uh, money and state? And if so, can you elaborate a little bit on what that might mean? It's very interesting. If you think about gold, gold is born in the collision of stars. So mm -hmm. a violent activity, but not one of men. Mm -hmm. uh, fiat currency, uh, to use um, Weber's phrase, comes from government, which is a monopoly on violence. In the weird case of Bitcoin, it doesn't have a physically violent birth, nor does it have a governmentally violent birth. But what it has is a mathematical birth. And the, the impenetrability um, of certain problems in mathematics, um, the difficulty of solving them is what gives Bitcoin its ability to exist. And so I, th I think what you have to do is you have to think that this is an entirely new sort of innovation where we have moved beyond uh, the violence of both stars and men. Have we though? Uh, so okay, gold is made by stars, that has nothing to do with us. Fiat is made by us. Bitcoin is also made by us, which means that people are going to be the ones building it, using it, um, creating infrastructures in which it can be liquidated or can be stored. Uh, do you think that uh, in terms of the way that humans work with money, that we have anything that we've discovered new? Well, humans build things like planes and then physics yeah. takes over and tells you whether or not what you've <laughs> built fair. is airworthy. I think once you've created um, one of these digital assets, it behaves in ways that may have nothing to do with you as the creator. If you haven't retained a measure of control at the beginning, it's anyone's guess as to whether or not you're able to, to steer and direct it later. It's quite possible 
that you'll be able to create something and lock yourself out of any ability to steer it in the future. So you've been in tech for a while and you really seem to understand how it evolves. Uh, we never could have predicted some of the ways that the technologies we use today, especially like the internet, social media, evolved. When you think about the future of Bitcoin, knowing we can't predict it, what do you think are some of the ways that it might evolve that we should be looking out for? Well, let me say something provocative just because okay. nobody else will likely have said it. In Silicon Valley, many of their tech uh, brethren talk glowingly about the coming abundance mm. uh, and the world of abundance, abundant economies. I think this is potentially terrifying mm. because abundance usually means that something is a public good and public goods do not play well with markets. They are mm -hmm. a source of market failure. Mm -hmm. Bitcoin and the blockchain and crypto more generally is a way of imagining a reversal of the process by which physical goods become logical goods. This is what mm. has been called software eating the world. Uh, yeah. And this is an opportunity to create an as if physical layer inside of the digital layer so that the digital world will behave with scarcity. Now that world of scarcity is reachable by our markets. So if markets are truly the engine of liberation, the uh, promise of uh, distributed computing and, and uh, digital tokens uh, and smart contracts is the, be the ability to create a layer with scarcity that will be within reach of our markets and won't live in its blind spot. So whether a world of abundance or a world of markets is a better thing, I can't say. But if there is a retreat from the world of abundance, perhaps uh, crypto will be the answer. That sounds a little bit like Austrian economics, or at least that perspective, uh, that emphasis on scarcity. Do you consider yourself an, uh, a believer in Austrian economics? Uh, I believe that there are interesting insights uh, that come from Austrian e economics, but I am not a member of that cult, <laughs> uh, nor am I a Keynesian. Uh, I think that the most interesting uh, economics is the economics we haven't built. I think that you have to look at all of our current major schools of economic theory as being first drafts. I don't think we've, we've seen a mature economics yet, and the possibility is that it will be born here. Maybe there will be algorithmic central banking outside of human control so that you won't have the ability to fix the economy mm. um, by a group of people whose interests may be divided between the general interest and their own. Where do you th what do you think that Austrian economics gets wrong that maybe in the next version of economic schools of thought we might get right? Well, I think that there's a general problem about any kind of mathematical encoding of human behavior. What I've said before is, is that fitness uh, is continued through markets. And so markets are the continuation of natural and sexual selection by other means. Mm. But the richness of human behavior, of agents, uh, has not been understood anywhere, in my opinion, in any of the major economic schools. And so in general, what you're dealing with is models of stick figures. There isn't an analog anywhere of energy and physics, uh, where energy is the unique observable of a physical system that not only tells you something about the system, like how much energy is in that system, but is also the source of propagation. So I don't think that Austrian economics is uh, as a solution for um, how to understand how an economy can be propagated forward. I think that the you know the Keynesians don't have uh, a good solution as to how um, to avoid issues of political e uh, economy and central banking. I don't think that any of the heterodox schools hmm. uh, are yet strong enough or complete enough to really claim that there is. Um, anything like a unified theory. And I think that the, the unification of economics will come when we understand that it has to be an as-if physics, mm -hmm. and it also has to be an extension of natural and, se and sexual selection to the apes that we ourselves are. Yeah, I hear that. So you say that like only a few of us have realized that something monumental has happened. Um, so what do you think those few of us that realize it should be doing, should be studying, should be thinking about if we're trying to build something new for the future? I think that the most important thing is to recognize that this will go the way of all um, hopeful technologies, that there will be a very romantic period, there will be probably a fairly dark period as the world of violence and the world, world, world of elliptic curves uh, come into contact with each other and uh, 
nations to try to figure out how their fiat currencies play together with crypto assets. Um, I think that this is a period of time in which we should try to steer, steer this very carefully. So there need to be people who are building very large um, positions in the space, but there also need to be people who are trying to figure out how to build in ethics because of the great danger of this stuff is that once you set it, it may take on a life of its own and you could very easily create something that once it gets out of the lab behaves entirely differently to the intentions of the creators. Yeah. I hear you on that. Thank you so much for taking the time today to join us and talk about Bitcoin. Thanks for sitting down.